Today we will be painting a Lamborghini. Let's get started. The supplies that you will need to paint along with me. I'm going to paint this in acrylic. And you can use acrylic black and white. Mix them together, you'll get gray. A cup of water a small and medium brush, a place to a palette for mixing, any kind of multi-purpose canvas will do. I'm using a cotton canvas, but you can use any kind of multi-purpose paper and an image. You might want to take a screenshot of this as a reference photo or I will link it below. First I'm going to crop it. Now you see the crisscrossy lines. Now you see I've got 12 squares. <coughs> no, nine squares. And that's going, that, so I'm going to draw that same grid on the canvas and then draw it square for square so I get proportions. Hey, everybody. So now I'm going to narrate through this painting here. I started this during the COVID lockdown, uh, spring of 2020. And um, this was, you know, the first thing I did for my students when I realized we weren't going back into the classroom again. And I filmed all this, but I never produced it until now, uh, winter of 23. So, um, yeah, let me tell you what I did here. Uh, as you can see, I made those nine squares. And um, now I'm copying the photo, which I'll have in the upper left screen for you to see as reference. I'm copying it using the iPad, which has the grid of nine squares, and I'm copying it square for square, and this helps me get proportions. I could do this without doing the grid method. It's called the grid method. But the grid method, it's easy, it's fast. You get rid of it later. It serves a purpose. It's a smart way to go without having to, you know, get in there with a pencil and really draw it accurately. The canvas I'm using here is super bumpy. This was some cheap canvas that I bought in a, in a roll back in 2014, and it lasted me for uh, for for six years. But um, I was glad to be done with it around this time because it was just it had too much texture, and lended for really loose paintings, and I couldn't get a lot of detail back then. But here I'm using acrylic paint. And I'm just mapping out the drawing, even though I'm using paint with a brush. It's still a drawing to me. It's as if I'm, I'm doing a pen and ink, and I'm dipping a brush into a, a jar of ink. Only in this case, it's black um, and water. There's my, uh, uh, I, okay, I had this, I still have it, and I sometimes use it, an app called Brush Stroke. And Brush Stroke lets you manipulate a photo. And in this case, I just wanted to see the photo in grayscale. The colors were distracting me and making it hard for me to judge the values. Values is an artistic term for the shades. So now that I've turned it into a black and white, a grayscale, it's much easier for me to go ahead and cover the whole canvas in shades of gray. All 50. It's like that's a corny joke I make to my students all the time. I say, how many shades of gray are there? And they say 50, and I go, wrong, there's infinite shades of gray. That's why that book was so stupid. And um, they haven't laughed at that joke yet, but you know, I'll keep trying it. All right, I'm following the instructions of all my previous art teachers before me, and that is to cover the canvas, Brian. Cover that canvas as fast as you can. Because when a canvas is toned white like that, it comes white from the factory. All that pure white is distracting. I need to find out from my reference photo, what is the brightest bright? You know, is it a reflection on the, the wheel? Is it uh, the window? Is it the back wall behind the car? But with all that white canvas clamoring for my attention, it's very hard for me to judge the values, the shades. So I've switched to a wider brush. I probably should have an even wider brush than that. And I'm, I'm wiping out the canvas as fast as I can. I'm making generalizations about the shades right now. 
I do a lot of squinting off camera. I'm, when you squint, you just see the important shades and you, it blocks out the details when you squint. There, I'm getting frustrated with the wheel, so I'm just gonna squint and then decide, okay, well, they're a medium dark. I just, this is also called blocking in. I'm blocking in the values, the shades, the values. It's a comparison game. I'm constantly comparing the shade of this part of the car to that part of the background and asking myself, when I squint, which one is darker, which one is lighter? Yep, I'm just scribbling. When the paint, the acrylic paint is dripping down the canvas, it's it's kind of a race against gravity. And um, so you'll find I'm, I'm painting really quickly and loosely, trying to control the drips. Just wait until I get to the oil paint. You're gonna see the, the first layer just drip right down, right down that board. So I'm, I'm judging values, but I'm also judging angles. So the form is taking place, it's taking form. I noticed that the glass is reflecting the sky and is bright, so I painted some opaque whitish gray on top of those windows. The brighter I make the wall just above the hood of the Lamborghini, the more the Lamborghini will appear as a dark and will pop forward in contrast. Acrylic paint will also dry on you a little faster than you want it to, which forces me to have to paint spontaneously and quickly and make snap judgments. I'm realizing that the rubber tires are brighter than the uh, the wheels the wheels inside. You know, the chrome or titanium or whatever the alloy wheels are. They're dark. The tires, even though they're black tires, they're brighter than the uh, the wheels. That would be hard to tell if I had left the reference photo in color. Off screen, I'm looking at it in black and white and those red wheels turn into a dark gray. I think when I put the reference photo up for this stage, it, I will have it in black and white for you. And then I'll switch to a colored one. How's that sound? Yeah, that's a good idea. Things in the distance should go blurry. The car should be sharper with more contrast than the back wall. Done with the acrylics. Clean your brushes. They don't clean themselves. I tell my students that all the time. I hope they uh, watch this.
and think of all the brushes they've uh, they've taken to an early grave. Okay, so I'm showing you that I've got paint thinner here and linseed oil. Linseed oil thickens it up, paint thinner thins it up. Odorless paint thinner, there it is. Into that nice little jar with the corrugated bottom for roughing up your brush. And there's my palette, wax paper. I like using the wax paper. It's disposable. I'm gonna start with thinned out paint. Look how thin it is. Because I'm painting over an acrylic painting, I wanna see through the paint for a little while. I wanna see that acrylic painting for a while. So me personally, I like to work super thin at first and thicken up the paint later. So I dipped into some sap green and then I grabbed some, some paint thinner, some Gamasol, I think that's a, a popular brand. And it's like I'm painting watercolor. I'm painting very conservatively this time around because this was the first painting I'd done in a long while. Because as you know, I also make music. And now uh, I get hooked on making music for six months. And then I get back to the canvas and uh, I've lost my rhythm as a painter. So it takes me um, a while to get my, uh, my, my skills back. Then I paint for six months, then I get back to music and I'm slow on the guitar and I'm slow making music. Oh, if I could learn how to manage my time well and compartmentalize. I can do it on the canvas, just not in life. That's a transparent blue. It's ultra marine. It's totally watered down with paint thinner. And you can see the green paint thinner on the wall just dripping down. Um, right. I'm just making color choices here. Later, I, I will discover that the dark shadow under the car is too dark, and there's actually a big patch of light underneath the car that needs to be shown. All right, this is the fun part, bringing in the color red. I believe that's alizarin crimson, which is a nice transparent burgundy type red. It's not a candy red, it's not a cherry red. Later I'll bring in the cherry red, or it's called cadmium red. That, that's gonna really pop. This is a conservative red. I'm putting a little red on the, on the parking lot in the foreground because red presents itself in the foreground whether you realize it or not. The nice thing about having an acrylic painting dried underneath is that I won't lose the form. I can make all kinds of sloppy mistakes with this oil paint right now, but I will not lose the acrylic painting of the car. It's solid. At this point I realize uh, m my paints are just too watered down with uh, Gamasol and I gotta do some cleanup with a rag. That is a cerulean blue, an opaque blue. That's an op Now I'm bringing in opaque colors. An opaque green, an opaque yellow, an opaque red, the cadmium red, the cadmium orange, and we're bringing in white, titanium white. So the transparent underpainting is, is um, is done and now I'm bringing in the big guns, the more permanent paints. And it takes me a while to find out the right concoction of how much paint versus how much thinner. 
It's like putting frosting on a cake. There it goes. So there's an, op an opaque green. Like a, it might be called green oxide. Might have a touch of uh, lemon yellow mixed in with it to make it look like a nice sunny day. Before I had ultramarine blue in that shadow, but now I'm bringing in some cerulean blue, which is a sky blue. Oh, I changed my mind. But I will put some cerulean blue in that shadow to make it more opaque. Windows are usually reflecting something, especially in daytime. So in this case, they're reflecting the sky. They're also transparent. They're not heavily tinted. So you can see the, the back wall right through them. All right, here's the fun part. Bringing in some electric red mixed with orange. Yes, this is a red Lamborghini, but there are different tones of red. And in this case, there's some orange, fiery orange. Okay, I'm using a mall stick there. Okay, that's just a plastic stick with some masking tape at the end, bunched up into a ball. And I'll lean that against the canvas and then I'll lean my right arm, my painting hand, on top of it for uh, stability. Because at this point, I'm working standing up, I'm pretty sure. And that makes for a shaky hand. I can't lean my elbow on a table at this point. So I use the mall stick from time to time to get some uh, precise strokes. I'm using a little linseed oil now to thicken up the paint in the foreground. It stretches your paint without thinning it out so much. Linseed oil is already in your oil paints, but you can have a little jar of pure linseed oil to thicken up your paint. The more opaque paint I lay down, the more three-dimensional that car will appear. Okay, I'm going back to the back wall. You gotta dress the whole canvas at all times. I don't like to hyper-focus in one area very long where I'll lose sight of the big picture. It's a lesson for life, isn't it? Oh man, who am I to speak on that? Well, here's a wide brush. And uh, in the reference photo, you might think that back wall is white. Or you might say, well, it's kind of sky blue. But on further investigation, there's all kinds of hidden colors. And it's the artist's job to find them. If you think you see some pink, you'll see pink. If you think you're seeing some purpley grays, you are. So put it in. All right, I'm assessing my progress so far. I'm looking at the big picture and I'm doing an A-B comparison. I'm gonna turn that photo into a painting. There's an, the app brush stroke allows you to do that. The app is like 10 years old. And it's, it turns it into uh, an imaginary painting, which helps me ignore fine details and see the photo as a painting. 
It helps me imagine my end result. I've come back into the classroom here to continue with the Lamborghini, and this is round three. It's had a couple days to dry, so I think this is gonna be the third and final session. If you're painting along with me, now I'm gonna use a smaller brush to get details. And I'm also gonna switch from a standing painting position to a sitting down station where I can really lean in and get the details. So, let's do it. Yeah, that was 2020, Brian, wow. That guy needs to work out. <laughs> All right, a fresh piece of canvas paper, pretty much the same paints. I got some sap green, I got some cerulean blue, ultramarine, sap green, uh, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, cadmium orange, cadmium, I don't know, oh, and there's some burn umber. That's like a brown, and then of course titanium white. Smaller brushes. You'd be surprised where the color brown can be applied. You might not see it in the reference photo, but um, it can serve a purpose. Okay, that's an important um, move I did under the car. I, it took me three sessions to see that there was bright light under the car. You know, sometimes I'm on and sometimes I'm off. I think you all can relate to that. Right, you can see I'm, I'm sitting down now and I'm leaning in and blocking the camera. My apologies. You know, I'm a one-man crew, what can I say? But as time goes by, as the painting progresses, I see things that I didn't see before. Sometimes they're obvious and sometimes they're subtle. But I saw that bright red on the spoiler, that's that tailpiece on the, on the back trunk. I finally saw that and realized, ooh, that's an important piece of paint. I learned that term from other teachers, a piece of paint. Mr. Walt Bartman would say, there should be a, this piece of paint here is very important, you see. It creates a moment of tension. I'll tell you what happened to this painting. When I finished, I never really felt like it was totally finished. I felt like I could have gone for more detail. I leaned towards more detail. You'll see in the end result, it's a very loose, spontaneous, um, completed painting. So I wasn't sure about it and I threw it in a closet for about three years. <laughs> and I sold it this year on eBay and it sold pretty fast and, um, you know, customers happy with it, and I was happy to, that I found a home, and I wondered why I waited three years to put it up for sale on eBay. And I, I gotta remember that a painting, is, if you work the whole canvas at all times, the painting is finished at any stage. I could have called this painting done when it was black and white. It was a decent painting when it was a impressionistic black and white grayscale kind of painting. I could have called it done when I put down those transparent greens and burnt alizarin crimson reds. Because I worked the whole canvas at one time, all areas were at a stage where I could have called it done. I could call it done right here. But, like many people, I suffer from perfectionism, and that often holds me back from, from being satisfied with something. 
But the solution for that, I have found, is to work on multiple paintings at the same time. Then I never get too hung up on one painting. And if a customer wants it and says, you know, hey, when are you going to be done with that painting of grandma or whatever? Even though I think, well, I could spend another few days on it, it's still done at its stage. It's at a stage of completion. Let it go. Move on. Wash, rinse, repeat. Popping in the brightest brights again. Those get lost throughout the painting. So I have to regularly put the bright moments of, of, of tension, the brightest brights, and it's usually found right next to the darkest darks. When I, when I find them, or I rediscover them, then, and I reinstate them, the painting pops. It sparkles. And it doesn't matter if I paint all the little circles in the wheels and you know, the little turbo decal at the bottom. I admitted that. I left it out. And I'm sure, I, you know, the keyhole, I knew it didn't, didn't bother with that stuff. What, what's important to me is the first thing I, I see when I glance at a car. That's what I want to paint, my first impression of the car. There's the opaque cerulean blue I'm popping in in that shadow. I, I'm, I almost called it done, but I remembered, no. Nope. There's some sky blue bouncing around in those shadows. And if I soften those shadows back there, oh look, a little bit of burnt umber, a little bit of brown in there. If I soften those shadows, the car will pop even further forward by contrast. There's the trusty mall stick. I have to hide that in my classroom because whenever a student finds it, he starts uh, banging people with it. I got a couple mall sticks. When they find them, they just get, get violent with those things. Playful. I remember I had some trouble in that area where the spoiler is um, meets that dark sh shadow. I remember try having to battle to decide what's darker, the spoiler or the shadow, and which parts pop forward and which parts fall back. So I defined the edge there, and I think that solved the problem. When I was a kid, I would always ask for a model car for my birthday and for Christmas. And my big brother, Pete, always delivered. He, gave, he would give me those, you know, assemble with glue model cars. 
And that would keep me so excited and so engaged for days. And through the years, I mounted a collection of these plastic model cars that I assembled using the instructions. And um, they'd fill up my bookshelves in my, my bedroom all throughout middle school and into early, di- early years of high school. So thanks, big bro. I'm clearly in finishing touch mode here. There are structural issues with the car I could fix, but I've decided this being my first painting after a long drought, I'm not gonna work this painting too much. I'm gonna settle for an impression of a Lamborghini and then move on to the next painting or get back to another painting I'm in the middle of. Here I realized there should be a few shiny, intense pieces of of cadmium red. And I think that was a good move. Well, if you made it this far, I thank you so much for watching my Lamborghini painting. Please like, share, and subscribe this video and check out my eBay store for finished paintings of cars and rock stars and guitars and, and celebrity portraits and uh, landscapes. And um, check out, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can see more videos like this. Now I'm going to let Myself from 2020, uh, say goodbye. Okay, here's the deal. I thought I was going to be finished with this, this number three session, but it's not happening because there's a lot of fussy details I need to get into, but the paint, being oil paint, is still wet and it doesn't dry fast like acrylic. So I have to let this dry for three days and then I can get back and get on top of the last layer and I can fix mistakes and layer things and tighten up the details. So if you were painting along with me and you're using acrylics, you can probably finish it up. But I need one more session on this and this sucker will be will be done. It has been pretty fun. I like this. It's got the color red. It's always fun. It's exciting. And um, I was able to sure up the form a bit today. It was really looking like a car crash the last session. One more session and we'll be done with this thing. Man, that guy needs to work out.